So I'm Dan Newman. I run a site called Maplite. We illuminate the connections between money and politics. And the point of this is to connect the underlying issue of money and politics to the specific issues people care about. So if you care about the environment or free trade or net neutrality or whatever, the effect of money on the political system affects all those issues and we aim to help highlight those connections. We are based in Berkeley, California, about 90 minutes from here. We have four staff and 10 research interns. And what we do is put together the money, all the uh, money given to politicians with the votes, all the votes that politicians make. And we launched for the California legislature about a year ago. And then in May, we launched our flagship site, um, uh, which covers all the money and votes in US Congress. And we are funded by the Sunlight Foundation and other foundations and individuals as well. So our data comes from OpenSecrets.org, the Center for Responsive Politics, and GovTrack.us, Josh's group, uh, which gets the data from the Library of Congress, and then for the state of California and other states, from Ed's group, the National Institute of Money and State Politics, and from state government websites. And we put together a third database here, which is the support and opposition for each bill. So like oil companies or labor unions, whatever, we collect that from hearing testimony, news databases, websites. That's what our 10 research interns do. I'm going extremely fast through this, but it'll give you a good idea in five minutes. So this is our homepage, and you can look at either California or US Congress. So in this example, I'll hit US Congress. And you can search by interest group, legislator, or bills. So let's go to the bills page. Let's put in this bill from 2006, last year, called HR 5684. And this was a bill that passed and made a free trade agreement between the US <coughs> and the country of Oman. And on the left-hand column here, we see the interest that wanted this bill to become law, such as aircraft manufacturers, chemical companies, communications companies, and so on. And on the right, the interests that did not want this bill to become law, such as consumer groups, labor unions, environmental groups. Again, this comes from public record information like newspaper articles and the groups on websites. And if we scroll down a little more, we can see the actual names of the group. So for example, Boeing Company, Dow Chemical, were in favor of this trade agreement, and AFL-CIO, Public Citizens and the Sierra Club were opposed. So we go here and click on the votes tab. Now we see the last vote on this bill in Congress. So this took place on September 19th, 2006. 62 senators voted yes and 32 voted no. And here's where it gets really interesting. You can never see before our site. We put the money together with the votes and we find out that the interests who wanted this bill to become law, like the aircraft manufacturers, for example, gave an average of $163,000 each to each of the legislators voted yes, about twice as much as they gave to the legislators voting no. And then you look at the interest groups that did not want this bill to become law, mostly the labor unions here when it comes to money, and they gave to both sides more to the people who voted no, and their total spending is dwarfed by the interest <laughs> groups in support. We can drill down and look at how each legislator voted. So here's a list of all the legislators. So this guy, Bonilla, voted yes. Here's how much he got from the supporting groups, and much less, only about $3,000 from the opposing groups. When we click on details here, we see a detailed breakdown for him, how much from pharmaceuticals, aircraft, beverages, and so on. Continuing on to the timeline view, we put this on a time graph, so we see when the contributions came in and when the votes took place. So down here, 2005, 2006, these little flags are the votes, and these red and green bars are contributions for a certain time period from the supporting and opposing group. So if we click on one of these green bars, for example, now we see a, a table of contributions for this time period, the contributing organization, the amount, who they gave it to. So going back to this timeline view, we can filter it for each individual legislator. So now, I'll filter it, now we're looking at the same graph, but just for this one guy, He's named Kevin Brady, and he voted yes on this bill on July 20th, 2006. We click on this green bar and find out the day before, on July 19th, he took $1,000 from Lindell Chemical. <coughs> now, we know that people coming to our site are going to know a lot more about these particular bills than our research team can, because often they're specialists in the subject of that bill. So we've created a way that you, as a site user, can send our research team tips. 
And so you go to um, back to this page where you're looking at support and opposition, you click add an organization. And then you can type in, oh yeah, well the SEIU opposes this bill because I know that. I'm a site user, I read it in the SEIU newsletter. You put in your email address, you send it, you send it to our research team, and we verify it. And if it's right, we put it in the database. So you get the best of like the wiki-like model of user contributions, but everything is verified. Now, part of our philosophy is we put the data out there for you to analyze it. You don't have to just take what we present. So you can go ahead and for custom analysis or because of information you have which is not in the public record, you can customize a list of support and opposing groups. So in this example, this is a bill that uh, was an FDA regulation bill about uh, prescription drug regulation. And there's an amendment to this bill back in May that uh, the Senate said that the Senate passed this amendment saying it's illegal for Americans to import drugs from Canada and other countries. And of course, the pharmaceutical industry really, really wanted this amendment because they don't want Americans to be able to buy less expensive drugs from other countries. So I'm going to take this, this bill, uh, which has numerous interest and support and opposition, show you very quickly how to customize it. And you do that by clicking this customize link. You get this blue box open that has a whole tree of interests. I'll click on health interests, and then pharmaceutical and health products into the subcategory. Put the pharmaceutical manufacturing in a support and remove the other ones. So I know I went through that very quickly. You can try it yourself. So now we've got this built just according to how you want to do the custom analysis, just for this group, pharmaceutical manufacturing. Now when we click on votes and go to that the particular vote on that amendment. You see that the pharmaceutical manufacturing gave seventy thousand dollars to the forty on average to the forty nine senators who voted to support this amendment, um, almost three times as much as they gave to people who voted to continue to allow imports. Now, this blue box appeared as a disclaimer. It says the information on this page is based on support and opposition information provided by a user, not by MapLite. So that's to show, to remind you, that you as a user brought in this information. And our software generates a custom link uh, here, totally transparent to you. You don't need to log in or do anything. You just copy this link. You put it in your blog. Okay? You want to write about drug imports from Canada. Look how much drug companies gave to people who voted yes. You paste in the custom link. You publish your blog entry. So now, when a reader of the blog comes, sees your opinion or your view on this issue, they click on the custom link, and it takes them right back to this customized page that a web user is only going to see if they went through your custom link. Here's an example of how our data is used. Um, the press and uh, the press is one of the big audiences for our work, so um, as well as nonprofit uh, interest groups across a variety of interests. So this is a, a local California paper, and uh, this tiny grassroots environmental group was opposed to a quarry for environmental reasons. And the, the head of this environmental group wrote this whole op-ed in the paper saying why the quarry is a bad idea. And then at the end, he cites MapLite data. He says, according to MapLite, of all the assembly members, these took a lot of contributions from Builders Association. He's using our data to bolster his point. And that's what we aim to do, is to connect the campaign contributions to the issues, help people, advocacy groups of all kinds, work on specific issues, and make that connection in the reader's head between the quarry, which they might care about in their community, and the campaign dollars. The last thing I'll show you here is uh, our newest project, which is widgets, trying to get this information out so you don't have to go to our site to see it. It'll be out there where you're looking, whatever you're looking at. So this is our presidential fundraising widget. This has been up uh, for about three months. You have each presidential candidate, how much they've raised. This is automatically updated from FEC data whenever the candidates make a new filing. You can select whatever <coughs> candidates you want. You can change the colors and the size. And here's an example of a couple people who put it on their site. Like this person put a lot of candidates here. They sorted it, uh, you know, so the Republicans and Democrats are sorted together based on the dollars. Here's another example where a person put in a lot of candidates and sorted it by party. And we have, um, going back here, we um, uh, publish all this data through free, open APIs, and including a lot of other data which is not displayed on this widget. Um, we take it from the FEC and we make it available through an API. And we also publish um, the, sort, the flash source code for this widget in open source, so you can modify it and make it do whatever you want. <coughs> 